14th source for all geeky and nerdy news and discussion, which means that you're listening to a podcast. For all intents and purposes. I'm Dee Bethel. And I'm Andrew Asplund. And we are your two overeducated codependent nerd hosts, bringing the things that we like to talk about, but filtered through inquisitive and critical lenses. In the episode for Friday, December 29th, 2023. Oh my gosh. The final episode of the year, Andrew. The final Friday. Indeed. I mean, I think that's the right. final Friday. Nope, we're never doing that again. <clears throat> nope. I'll, I'll make it sync up in post. Don't worry. Yeah, so we're here to check in. The holidays are ostensibly done, although is New Year's a holiday? I think to people like you and me, it's probably in a lot of ways more of a holiday because it's exciting. And so that's why we're here, dear listeners. We are going to celebrate the new year, basically sending off 2023, uh, with a rather short one because we got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could tell. We're busy. Oh, I, I, I have been busy, actually. I spent this week, uh, well, a couple days. Making sausage. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, what? Yeah. This is actually it's it's funny because when I tell people this, they're like, "What?" Um, and this is the I always joke. This is the kind of thing you know that in 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 other worlds people pay money for, right? Like, so not a euphemism. No, not a euphemism, sir. Okay, I just want to make sure. No, actually, I uh, it, it's the same way that you know, um, rich ladies pay to go like stomp grapes at. Uh, a, <laughs> yep. a, 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 a winery. I didn't pay money to go to the local sausage house and sausageria. Sausage sausageria is that? That's that's totally the name of it. That's, yep, that's a town in California. I think <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, so yeah, this, this was actually like this was the, my final end of year because I, I had the week off. Um, I went and made uh, sausage like like professionally. Uh, okay, so it was like a, it was a contained experience, not like yeah. So I was just making sausage at home. Yeah, no, I went to a, a, a formal place of business and I put meat into grinders. I put sausage into i I stuffed sausage. You packed some membranes. Yeah, I did. Nicely done. Uh, casing. Let's not call it membranes. Oh, good call. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, I'm, I'm not a sausager. I don't know the language. Oh, like as ends up, I'm actually really bad at stuffing sausage. What I learned, mm -hmm. uh, take that for what it what it's worth. Uh, but man, I had like what a weird. This is I know this is not geeky and nerdy. Although I no, guess it is. It is. It's for way. all intents and purposes, Andrew. Have you not understood the show? What what a weird experience. I, I'm so glad that I was uh, like. Allowed to have this experience. Like, was it like a gift that was given to you? Like, hey, <laughs> no. This is actually where uh, it ends up when you go to the local German beer hall enough, and uh. you know, get to know the head chef, and you say like, hey, could I do this? And he's like, absolutely. Come in this day. So, how long was the event? Like, how long did it take uh, the event? Well, how was the experience? So. I spent, what, uh, three hours one day and about an, an hour or two uh, another day. So two days. Oh, wow. Um, and basically making 75 pounds of sausage. That you got to keep? Uh, no. No. I just oh. made them for other people to enjoy. Oh, look at you. Contributing to the community. I, mean, I, like I literally was just, you know, working at a restaurant. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I realized the more I, I, I think about it, the more I, I, I ponder my experience. I realize how much... Mm -hmm. Like, it is a, a bit about, like, it feels like the guy who's really into beer goes and learns how to brew beer and then wants to brew beer on his own. Like, I'm like, oh, I just did that, but for sausage, you know. <laughs> there we go. Well, just don't kill people and make sausage out of them, Andrew. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not what we want here. <laughs> Big yikes. Uh, I'll do my best not to. Thank you. That's all. That's all we ask. Uh, what? So uh, the important question is, what kind of sausage was it? Uh, well, there, there were three different uh, kinds. Uh, Excellent. But the one that I actually mixed and stuffed myself mm -hmm. uh, was a uh, Kartoffelwurst uh, potato sausage. Oh, okay. So basically, a pork sausage with potato in it. That's cool. Yeah, and I honestly, at this point, at the time of this recording, I've not actually sampled my sausage because it's still in the process of being made. Um, Indeed. I did I did half of it. But yeah. Um, so how much did you get to go home with? Or, or did, you, did you get to 
t- to get to keep. I mean, it's I, again, I'm I'm supporting a local business. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, but there's like you know, you know, there's benefits to to doing work, right? Yeah. Unless you got a paycheck. Did you get a paycheck? Uh, so so I I will be bringing some home, uh, undisclosed amount. That Fair is enough. to say, I don't know how much. <laughs> okay, there we go. Andrew doesn't ask the hard questions. He's just here to pack the sausage. Mm, yeah. Anyway, that's a fun diversion I thought I'd share. And much like a sausage, we pack a lot into a year. <laughs> but we wanted to spend today just kind of reminiscing on, as we did last year, kind of like, not like doing rankings or doing lists or anything, like that, but just kind of like... Out of everything, in terms of nerdy, geeky stuff, the stuff we kind of cover, what does 2023, in hindsight, kind of mean to you? What's the thing that stood out, like either a game, a movie, a show, or an activity, or a type of thing? You know, there's no there's no limits here. Um, and just kind of go like, well, in hindsight, what is, as a nerd and geek, what is 2023 going to be defined by? And so Andrew and I have taken some time to consider our answers, and we are going to share them with you. And Andrew, what did you come up with in terms of what does 2020, what will 2023 be in your memory? So it's funny because when we started this, we, 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 we pre-talked it and I Mm. thought like, oh man, fishing games. That's the thing that like the weird thing this year of like really good games about fishing that came out. But I don't actually think that's the thing that will be the 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 post for me in 2023. The thing that I will remember this year for, and that is whatever the hell is happening with D and D. Oh, interesting. Uh, Dungeons Explain. and Dragons, right? Like the idea that uh, this was the year that really saw Wizards of the Coast. Uh, I, I, how to mm. politely up. Uh, fuck up the brand uh, in a really, you know, <laughs> like glamorous ways repeatedly um, to the point where it spawned an entire like community of people doing not d d in various flavors. I can think of a couple ways. Yeah. Let's run through them. Like what are the sort of the, the spark points for you? Well, the, like the, the, the big one was, are they getting rid of the OGL are they, right. are they? Do they want to try to control the game, the rule set? Uh, that was a huge one. That's the one that caused all these other, you know, games to basically be born. Uh, but also, <laughs> similarly, uh, some of their struggles, hashtag struggles, with AI art, mm-hmm. which keeps happening for them. And and using copyrighted art. Remember their movie, their, one of the posters for the movie? Oh, right. <laughs> using someone else's art. Uh, yeah, Paizo's art, in fact. There, there, uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, the AI art issue with one of their books. Right. And then most recently, I mean, this isn't necessarily a D&D issue, but definitely a Hasbro issue of letting a bunch of people go. Right. And that's and then the fact that, like, despite all the ostensible success of the, the right. brand, they cut, like, some crazy percentage of their employees. So to me, it's, it's, it's this weird year where, like, I'm like, oh. I play role playing games. I don't play D anD D, but I right. really wonder: like, is this the year like D anD D shits the bed, um, or was this the year that like really D anD D shit the bed? Because that's that's quite a a, a a a stack of dominoes, really. Well, and and to, to the point where people still are talking about what is the the plan going forward? Like, what sure. is D anD D going forward? I don't know. I mean, no one knows. It had some success. Although not financially necessarily successful, the movie was fine. Yeah. Good movie. Baldur's Gate 3 is ostensibly a D&D related right. event, right? And, and that's, that's done Gangbusters. Gangbusters. Yeah, yeah. Not only selling well, but also cleaning up at awards and, and, and critical reception. Right. So a couple of wins, but I think you're right. Like lining that up against the serious fumbles is pretty damning. Have they made any announcements? Because what's, what's the current... Edition they're on of D anD D. Well, fifth edition. Although next year will be the release of, well, what was at one point one D anD D. At one oh, point was God. called, I forget what I, I forget the the whole permutations. Uh, but basically, to kind of celebrate the fiftieth anniversary, they're going to release uh, a new rule book or a new set of rule books. Okay, uh, which 
they they want it to be like oh it's just, it's still the same D and D, and that's also been part of the the weird process where they're like oh here's what we're thinking about doing to to update the the rule set, and somehow it, I mean talking to people that play D and D, they're kind of shocked that it seems like they're just going back to more of the same. Have they been piloting this new rule system like they've done with previous editions? Yeah, they, I mean, they have they have like whatever play tests and stuff, and some of it like people are like, "Oh, that seems really cool," but then they go back to like, "Well, actually, let's just do this <laughs> thing that looks like the old thing." <laughs> right? I thought you might be saying they might be doing like what was it World of Warcraft did recently to oh, please its old fans? War, World of Warcraft Vanilla, I think it's called, where it's like, remember when it was sm- small and and bad? I'm not. I'm. <laughs> I've never played World of Warcraft. Right. I'm not judging, uh, but they're like, "Hey, hey, hey, people that played it a long time ago and still want the old version." Here you go. <laughs> I can see them like, "Oh no, here's here's D and D, here's OG D and D, and it's all like just grinding." Well, actually, they did that years ago. That actually that was done in like what 2015. And, or and <laughs> really, 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 with all the same. No, kind literally of the bad same. illustrations yes. in those original books yes. and stuff like that. They should do that. Yeah, they they already did. They did already. Facsimile editions right there. The reprint of first edition, second edition, and third edition. But anyway, that's that's kind of my takeaway from 2023. Uh, yeah, a little more uh, nuanced. Not necessarily nuanced, but different than what we had pre-talked about. Right. I thought I was going to talk about fishing. Sorry. I mean, ever <clears> since <throat> you got into the sausage game, you're like, fishing? Pfft, who cares? <laughs> For me, 2023 is much more sentimental in some ways. Um, it was a bad year, personally. In a lot of ways. And the thing I kept coming back to, <laughs> my first thought was like, can I make it stray again? That cat game that I was my 2022 sort of like moment that I talked about last year. Because I played that again once I got a, my new PlayStation this year from start to beginning, from start to end. Jeez. As comforting as that was, I think the thing that I kept coming back to is actually much more like a flash of time. And for me, 2023, I think I'll be remembering it most. Aside from like, you know, the the bad and the good and whatever, right? For Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh, okay. The 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 their latest and and ostensibly final uh Indiana Jones film. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Um I really liked it. <laughs> um I saw it three times in the theater. But also I got to and not to get too personal and sentimental here, but um it's one of the things that I that that it's kind of one of the few traditions my my dad and I have. Okay. And he lives very far away. Um, well, relatively speaking, uh, he lives down in San Diego. It's about a seven eight hour drive. But I was able to get down there because ever since Temple of Doom, um, we've seen the Indiana Jones movies together in theaters. And I'm like, oh, there's a part where I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to. To make it because it didn't do well, right? Um, right. I think it reviewed fairly, fairly well, but for some reason people didn't see it. Probably because the crystal kingdom of the crystal skull soured people's intentions. And, well, and also movies are right. Like the whole, that's, like the whole system, <laughs> the whole borked. system might be broken. Yeah, and but when I got down there to visit him in the summer, I think it was July. It was still on one screen in in his in his town. I'm like, want to go see Indiana Jones? <laughs> and again, my dad's my dad's older, and uh, I mean he's vaccinated and stuff like that. But you know they're still being really careful with COVID and all that stuff, as you should be, right? Because it's scary. Um, but he was game, and being able to see that with him in theaters to watch him enjoy it as much as he did. I don't care what anybody thinks about the movie uh, that. Is an experience that um, that I'll cherish, and on top of all the 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 bad stuff that happened this year in terms of personal loss, vocational difficulties, <laughs> um, I'll have that memory um, to 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 remember to to go to and and to remember this year by more than than any of the bad stuff. Oh wow, that's really good. Yeah, and <clears> so. <throat> I feel bad I said mean things about the movie. <laughs> I don't think you did. Did you ever see it? I don't think you did. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, good for... 
Moving on. Uh, no, I think that was that was the joke where I inadvertently started watching it at midnight and realized, oh shit, it's two and a half hours long. It is a long movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of sentiment sentimentality there. Um, I did like the movie for 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 what it is, and but again, Indiana Jones is is pulp fantasy fun. Right. Like that's that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be dumb. Not as dumb as Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which after watching Dial of Destiny, I went back <laughs> and rewatched. The quote unquote bad Indiana Jones movies, being Temple of Doom and King of the Crystal Skull. King of the Crystal Skull, Skull is still very um, <laughs> uh, 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 bad. Uh, oh boy. Like, it's worse now. <laughs> and I think makes what they, they're able, what James Mangold is able to do with, with Dial of Destiny kind of stand out even more. And uh, so that that's kind of 2023 to me. Um, I think the only other thing I might say would be, it could be another movie. It'd be Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I saw that twice, I think, in theaters. Um, and I just, I really loved how that trilogy kind of came together in the face of, I think, what difficulties Marvel was kind of facing this year in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that I think the most one of the most successful trilogies of the MCU is the one where they kind of hired, for lack of a better word, an auteur to kind of just, and they let him do his thing. Right. Speaks to the quality of, of someone that has a vision, has a voice, and they kind of trust him to do that, right? Yeah. Um, not saying that's what every Marvel franchise should be, but uh, it's kind of see, it's cool to see that play out. But yeah, Dial of Destiny, uh, a very special movie to me, um, but I don't have a punchline. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Well, it's okay because Indiana Jones does. That was a that was a punchline. Yeah, punchline. Yeah, yeah. Punch yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I punched my hand. It hurt. So that's twenty twenty three to us, mm -hmm. and it gives us a good jumping off point to jump into twenty twenty four, which is Andrew, our tenth year, and it's no doubt we'll be talking exclusively about Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. That was kind of a big fake out, right? We were going to come here. We got the, uh, was it the church? What was, what was the name of that episode? Uh, the Church on Ruby Road. The Church on Ruby Road. But that's that's for next time. So if you, dear listeners, have any thoughts about the topics we discussed this week, feel free to leave your thoughts as comments on the page for this episode at forallintents.net. You can also post your comments or engage in conversations with other listeners on our Facebook page. You can find us on other social media as well, specifically the places that Andrew and I frequent, which means you can find me on Instagram at debuffalcomics, and you can find Andrew on Mastodon at profounddark at dice.camp. While you're at our website at forallintents.net, you can also take a look at our YouTube page, which you may be listening to the show on YouTube. Uh, if you do, <clears throat> please like and subscribe, as the, the kids like to say, or uh, ring that bell. Wait, no, no, they yep. say ring the bell. Strike anyway, that, whatever, it. just do it. Just do it. Do the thing. Click the, the, the button <laughs> with the bell. Make it happen. <laughs> kids these days. We use two texts of music for our show. One is called Disco Medusi. The other is called District 4. Both written and performed by Kevin McLeod of the Clan McLeod, immortal swordsman, graph paper enthusiast, and musician extraordinaire. You can find his music and more at incompetech.filmmusic.io, and that's all licensed under the Creative Commons 4.0 attribution license. If you like the show and like to help us out, the best way to do so would be to subscribe to the show using whichever podcasting service you happen to use. What would help us out even more, though, would be to leave some sort of review, whether a text review or using their proprietary metric will, will help spread the word to new potential listeners through the magic of algorithms. Algorithms. I saw a, um, on, I forget which social media it was, someone had created a thread of, I guess every year Lucasfilm did like Christmas cards, <clears throat> specifically Christmas cards or holiday cards, I guess, as the years went on. And they kind of posted what they, there were some gap, gaps, but it's usually like Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. And then it came into 2022, I think, that makes the most sense actually. And it was like, oh, we got the Mandalorian, of course. We got Star Wars. We got Indiana Jones. And they put Willow on there. I'm like, hmm. Before you erase that poor motherfucker from existence. Before, before you disappeared it. Yeah. Rude. Rude. I just got to get my one more Willow apology in there before 2024 drops in, Andrew. 
Anything you're looking forward to specifically in 2024 or just continued existence and hopefully more joy than before? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I have no big plans. I have no big expectations. Uh, mm. You know, we'll see what happens. I have some big expectations. And those expectations are in the form of Shudi Gatwa as the doc. Oh, that's a good point. Good point. Mm. Spring. We got. We got. We didn't get official date. I think, but we got a time. Just they said spring, spring. twenty twenty four. So between four and five months, I'm guessing is what we're looking at. Yeah. So that's fine. You just keep watching the church at Ruby Road over and over again. Mm-hmm. So until you watch a beloved show over and over again, dear listeners, and until twenty twenty four, I'm D Bethel. And I'm Andrew Asplund. And for all intents and purposes, that was a podcast. So I should have like a like a little not a kazoo, a little thing you blow for a celebration at New Year's. What do they call those? Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sausage. <laughs> Chroma. And this point is exclusively for pornography. <laughs> okay. Which is what Twitter's for. That may be beyond my abilities. <laughs> 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 Hi, it's Glenn. Oh my God, oh, I've been Glenn. Did you miss me? Mm-hmm. I miss you. You're the best. Wouldn't it be uh, another uh, the year episode. I spent this morning making sausage. <laughs> yeah, you. Well, I'm Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> oh.